I'm not surprised. <laughs> what is up, my crew? Thank you for joining me and welcome to this week's episode of Chingasso's Combat Crew. On this week's episode, I'm setting the table for us for next week's Chingasso's that are going to be dropping. We got CJI, Craig Jones Invitational, ADCC, UFC 305. I got tons of UFC gossip, cheese man, UFC fight announcements, all the juicy stuff you want to hear about for the week. Let's freaking go. Before we jump in, though, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Thank you for everyone that has been tuning in these last couple of weeks. We super duper appreciate you. Thank you so much. And also, reminder... Don't forget, all of our episodes are set up into chapters, so you can jump around to any story you want. Just check out the description below to hop into any week, any story you want for the week. With that being said, let's get started with this week's episode, y'all. Also, I want to say I'm so sorry about the audio last week. Had a little hiccup there, but it's back, and I'm going to make sure it does not happen on this week's episode. So let's get cracking here. We're going to start with CJI 2024. Coming up this Friday, so don't forget, free on YouTube. We're going to look at both sides of the brackets here, starting with the 80 and over kilogram bracket. So matchups that I'm going to be looking at, that I'm looking forward to seeing. I want to see Victor Hugo against everybody. Uh, William Tackett, Joa Gabriel, that's going to be a sick one. But one of the matchups that I'm really surprised that I'm looking forward to is down in the left-hand corner. I know my big head is blocking it, but it says Pat Downey, Luke Rocco right there. What yep, that fuck? should be interesting. That should be interesting. So, uh, Nikki Rod, of course, Max Jimenez, that's going to be a banger of a matchup with the winner probably coming out of this side of the bracket. So, we'll see what happens. But if you're asking me where I'm going to be spending most of my time at, it's going to be right here checking these guys out the minus 80 kilogram division. I am super duper stoked. For the matchups, check out these first round matchups Ty Rudolo, Jason Nolf, Roberto Jimenez, Levi Jones Leary, Lucas Barbosa, Kenta Iwamoto, Andy Varela, Joseph Chen. That might be matchup of the entire tournament. So don't turn your backs on that one. Other side of the bracket, Cade Rudolo, Matthias Denise. If you're not familiar with Matthias Denise, hey, he's been training. It looks like he's been training with uh, Yuri Samos for ADCC. So he looks ready to go. Hanato Canuto, Tommy Laniker is going to be fun. Majid Hage, Yogan O'Flanagan. And this one is going to be fire. Andrew Tackett taking on the boy, Nikki Ryan. This is going to be good. Because remember, all these guys are already getting 10K and one extra dollar right off the bat. But they're also competing for a million bucks. So look for them to be going at it from the get-go. All right, right on the other side of town, in the same city, ADC. God. Yep, Damn. ADCC going down at the T-Mobile Arena. Not a lot of, I mean, it's not as stacked as it was last year, 2022. You know what I mean? I remember me and Cousin Nat were out there. Uh, the brackets have not been revealed. I remember last, at 2022, they held a viewing party. They were going to release the brackets. They were going to have a... Meet and greet with the fighters. It was a shit show. Let me just say that. It was not fun. Uh, and that was just the beginning of what happened the rest of the weekend. One of the big reasons why I didn't want to go this year. And now we got CJI and ADCC in the same weekend. So I'm going to stay my butt home and watch this. So maybe you even have a watch party. So let me know if you guys are down for that. Maybe do a live stream on Twitch. But since the brackets have not been revealed, we can look at who is left as cousin Ad would say or has like to say so who's left so these two brackets are the two brackets that i'm gonna make sure 
I have on at least one screen. I'm for sure going to have two TVs on at the same time. So let's check this out. 16 members, under 66 kilograms, Diogo Reis, Owen Jones, Dorian Oliveres, Ethan Thomas, Gerberg Ibrahimov, Kennedy Maciel, Fabricio Andre, DeAndre Corbe, Hu King Su, Ethan Krellenstein, Kawa Gabriel, Ashley Williams, your boy Josh Cisneros, yeah boy, Keith Krikorian, Gabriel Sosa, and Diego Pato. Very, very dangerous bracket. And again, don't blink, man, because you're going to be seeing scrambles. You're going to see wrestling. You're going to see somebody walking out with a limp because legs will definitely be taken. And then the minus 77 kilogram tournament. Check this out, man. This is another. I mean, these two are my number one and number two brackets out of the entire division. All right. Elijah Dorsey, Luis Paulo, Alexandre Jesus, JT Torres, Mika Galval, my favorite grappler, Mika Galval, PJ Barch, Jonatas Gracie, Oliver Taza, Matthias Sinzinski, Davi Ramos making a return, your mom's favorite grappler, Gary Tonin, Fabio Colai, Jeremy Skinner, Wagner Rocha, and Max Hansen. Guys, I'm telling you, those two brackets, amaze. Minus 88 kilos. I'm not going to go through the name, all of them, but Giancarlo Vodani, obviously the number one seed in that. He's going to be making a splash. Isaac Michelle should be fun to watch. And who else might be fun to watch in here? Achilles Rocha. I know he's super young, but he is like a boy in a man's body, man. So watch out. Minus 99 kilos. Kynan, number one seed, of course. Who else? Nicholas Maragalli. Yeah, that should be a little, that should be fun until we get to the finals. And then the over 99 kilograms, Dan Manasal, Mikey Perez, Hysam Rita. Should be interesting, should be interesting. And then check these out. We're going to get two super fights, y'all. Two super fights. Yep. We got Gordon Ryan taking on Yuri Samos. And then Gordon Ryan taking on Philippe. Pena. So I don't know if there's going to be one on Saturday, one on Sunday, or if they're both going to be on Sunday. Typically, this is the last match on Sunday. So we will see what happens next. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. All right. Going down Friday, September Friday 6th. We got a banger one 168 show going to be coming up. And check it out. I got fire matchups that you're going to want to make sure to tune into. So we got about two, three weeks before this is going to come up. But that Johan Gazeli, that kid is going to be coming to scrap. I know his last fight was kind of a letdown. So stay tuned. You like seeing people get knocked the F out. That's definitely a good way to start the show. Uh, Bantamweight Muay Thai matchup. Check that out. John Lineker taking on Asa Tenpao. Dude, that is going to be sick. Someone will definitely... Be getting their jaw rocked in that one. Uh, about 10 catchweight Muay Thai by Liam Harrison taking on Sexton. Yes, please. I will take some of that. And then co main event, check it out. Right after ADCC and CJI, we got K. Ruderlo taking on the boy Mikey Musa Mechi in a lightweight strap grappling match for Cade's lightweight belt. So Mikey is coming for it, so get ready. That's going to be a fun one. And then the main event, Bantamweight Muay Thai World Championship, Jonathan Haggerty taking on Superleg. That is going to be a war. So I cannot wait for that card. Cannot wait, man. All right, y'all. Our boy, Muhammad Mokai, if you guys remember, he won his fight against Manel Cop. If you didn't catch it, don't worry. You didn't miss anything. Most people took a nap during that time. But he's on. So what's your message here for the UFC? Because obviously you want to get re-signed to the UFC, right? So what's your message here? Of course. I even I said to Hunter Campbell, I said, whatever I've done at the hotel, I'm ready to pay for that and fight next fight in UFC for free. Whatever trouble I made. Um, I think it's... Bro, he wants to fight for free. He is willing to fight for free. It'll never happen. They would never allow it to happen, but that's what he's saying. 
So he's willing to risk it all just to stay in the UFC. He does not want to go anywhere else. But there's other people that are throwing their name in the hat, like Asim Zaidi, the karate combat president who is inviting him to come over and saying, yo, take this as an opportunity to develop your striking skills, show everybody that you're willing to put in the work and then go back to the UFC. So that's an option for him. Unfortunately, I don't think that he took it because he said that he has signed with or he's going to have a fight with Brave FC. Brave FC is an organization in Bahrain, and it is run by Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. And it's been around for a while, 2016, I want to say. So they're not a number one contender like Octagon or a Bellator or a PFL, but it's competition and they're out there. You know what I mean? He could also go to Ryzen. I know the Ryzen president was chomping at the bit trying to get him to go over there, but he didn't. So yeah, we'll see where he ends up. We'll see where he ends up. All right, y'all. Uncle Dana on the scene again. Check this out. He's on ESPN MMA and they were doing some type of like a opening UFC tops. UFC cards. Check this out. Jan Blagovich Refractor. Ooh, Ooh John Jones. That's badass. Ooh. That's a shot. Badass. Look at that card. That's a very special card. Somebody like you. It's like the king. That's nasty. Greatest fighter in the world. We got a John Jones card that looks like a king. Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? We got a king. He looks like a king. He's a king on the card. He's the king of the UFC. Let's fucking... Oh, Uncle Dana, calm down. Let's see where John is on the pound, UFC pound for pound rankings. What do you guys think? Where do you guys think he's at now? Number one, not, not, of course not. You got to fight in order to be on the top three. I'm surprised he's even at number three. I mean, I wouldn't put Elia above John in pound for pound rankings, but maybe Leon could have been up a little bit higher. Maybe Bilal now, but let's check out Dana's reaction to the latest UFC pound for John pound. John Jones rankings. is ranked number three pound for pound in the world. Jeez. Most fucking ridiculous, embarrassing, stupid, know what? nothing John about fuck. fucking fighting ranking of all fucking time. John Jones is yeah. still an active fighter. Yeah. He beat Cyril Gaon. He's going to fight again in November. John Jones is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, period, end of story. Whether you want to call Islam, Pereira, Game number over. two, number three, all good. To have anybody above John Jones right now just goes to show that you know absolutely fucking nothing Thing about combat sports and fighting. The other thing about John Jones, when you talk about inactivity, any fighter in the history of fighting including Muhammad Ali, was yes. never the same again after his three-year layoff. And Muhammad Ali wasn't doing bad things to himself like John Jones was. And John Jones comes back and looks even better. It's undebatable. It's undebatable. Anybody who even tries to debate this with me, Game you're over. just hating Forget on John Jones it. and you don't like him as a person. Forget about it. No one can do more lines of coke hit pregnant women, get a DUI, beat up somebody's lady, hide under the cage, and then defend their strap all in the same day. I don't know, care who you talking about. Nobody gets it done like John Jones. Psych. That's such, I mean, I don't know why he's having such a hard time with this. Come to reality, Dana. Well, come on back. We'll help. We'll take you back. Don't worry about this. I know you got to defend your boy. I know he's like the last hope you have of beating Francis, but come on, dude. Enough is enough. All right. Speaking of pound for pound rankings, check this video out here, y'all. I want to play this for you. This is Bilal Muhammad, uh, Leon Edwards, and this is Leon going back to his corner just before round five. I did not hear when he said this originally. Sit down. You want me to stop this fucking fight? Well, you fucking know I will. Bro, his coach asked him, do you want me to stop the fight? And Leon said, S-T-F-U. Bro, if I were to say that to anybody on my squad, they'd slap the shit out of me. I'm surprised his coach put up with that, man. But that's... Basically, where Leon's head was at, that's where Bilal put him after he dumped him on his head. Most likely brain damage, y'all. Brain damage. 
But let's keep talking about Bilal, man, because he has been chirping back and forth with Kamaru Usman. And I should have put the last tweet, but I didn't. Maybe I'll save it for next week because Bilal got him 10-7 on this last round. But they started off like this. Check this out. Kamaru says, all right, enough of the nice guy. You were never chasing me, bum. You were barely in rankings when I dominated the division. FYI, I have a win over Leon, son. Then Bilal responds, dominated division? You beat Masvidal twice and went to cardio kickboxing war with Kobe twice. You were protected by UFC. Now you can barely walk. Your podcast sucks and your part in Black Panther sucked. Yo, shots fired. Shots fired. That is cold blood, did. Um, I got Kamaru's resume on the screen, at least dating back to December 2019, when he was on fire. When he beat the shit out of Colby for five rounds, eventually got the TKO in round five. Then, if you guys remember, he fought Jorge on late notice in Abu Dhabi, went five rounds with him, beat the crap out of him, but he couldn't finish him. Then, he beat the crap out of Gilbert in a three-round war. And Gilbert was a bit undersized in that one. Fought Jorge again, finished him this time in two rounds. Then went five rounds with Colby, could not finish him. And then he went on the three-fight losing streak with the first KO loss to Leon, then the unanimous decision loss, and then the unanimous decision loss to Kamzat at 185 on short notice, I might add. So, yeah. I mean, you got to agree with Bilal, probably past Kamaru's time. He's living off of his old wins. I don't know why they have him ranked so high when, again, this is a similar John Jones situation, but nobody talks about it. He's been in the top rankings, and he hasn't fought in since last year of 2023, March, when he lost to Leon. He's been fighting once a year since 2022. Or actually, no, I'm lying. He fought twice last year. But let's get another fight in at 170, see where you're really at. You know what I mean? I don't think he's a contender at this moment. But, hey, if there's nobody else there, I mean, there is Shafkat. So why not? Why not give Kamaru another opportunity against somebody else? And then let's see what happens, man. All right. We're going to have Izzy fighting next week on UFC 305. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But check this out. UFC Is, is UFC getting ahead of themselves here? They're saying that. They're going to wait and see what happens with the Izzy and DDP fight. But if Izzy wins, they might be scheduling a fight for Alex. Could it be Alex versus DDP at light heavyweight? I wonder. I wonder. But, hey, there's a guy named DDP, and he's got something to say about it. So let's see what happens. Dude, our boy, Sugar Sean the Clown O'Malley on his podcast. Drop this bit of info. Check I it think out. It, it makes it, it's an interesting match. O'Malley versus Nurmagomedov. So. Did Dana say that's what's ne- what would be next? No, I, I haven't really talked to him. I've uh, Figgy beat Cheeto on the same card. Figgy called me out. That could be next. It, I don't know. Max versus Elia is coming up. Would love an opportunity to go up to 45. So Max, Elia, Nurmagomedov, Figgy. Like, I got so a lot the, of options. So I, I, I options feel like I'll be able wrong. to make a call out. Obviously, last fight, I beat Cheeto, called out Elia, didn't get that fight. So just because you win bro, doesn't mean you're He's not gonna... in your weight class, man. He's not in your weight class. Stay in your lane, bro. You barely defended once. So he's saying he's got options on the table, A, B, C, and D. Um, I don't see two of those options being super realistic because they're in a higher weight class. So let's go with the options that are most likely to happen. Umar and Figgy. Well, according to Dana and Umar's camp, Umar is next after Sean versus Marab. So whoever wins that fight, is going to get Umar next. And Figgy's just going to have to either sit it out one more time or take on another fight. So we'll see. And then if Sean or Umar gets through those fights, then maybe they can set something up with the winner of Elia and Max. But at this point, I think Sean's head is getting too big to get through the door. He's It's good to have goals, bro. It's definitely good to have goals. But let's get through what the door that's in front of you next, bro. Marab. <clears throat> All right, y'all. Fight announcement time. What the F is going on? I am fuck? so ashamed of this. I'm I don't I mean I don't why are they doing this, dude? Joff Neal taking on RDA Rafael Dos Anjos at UFC 308, October 26th at Welterweight. 
Dude, RDA's been fighting lightweight forever. I know he's fought at welterweight before, but that's it's been a minute, man. Jeff Neal ain't that dude to be messing around with. I'm kind of I'm worried about RDA in this one. Just might be taking on more than he can chew. They might be trying to send him on his way out. This might be like UFC, what UFC does to their old veterans. You know what I mean? They give them a they give them a young and hungry fighter who's ready to make a name for themselves. And Jeff's been there for a while already proven himself so i don't know why they're feeding rda to him unless juff has some beef or cheese me on dana i don't know but that's crazy that's this is crazy because no matter what happens here this is not good for jeff whether jeff wins uh the, i mean this is the only thing that can happen here is jeff if jeff loses he's gonna lose his rankings right this is all which is good for rda but I just don't see that happening, man. I just don't see that happening. All right. Check this out. August 24th, Jared Cannonier taking on Cayo Boralio. Number five taking on number 12. And, dude, you talk about leapfrogging a lot of people here. This is a big, big opportunity for one of Fight Nerd's best fighters, Cayo Boralio. Again, number 12, number five, Kenanier has been having a little bit of a, seems to have hit a rough patch in his career. I don't know if it's age. I don't know if it's wear and tear, but he has not looked really good in his last couple of fights. You guys remember his last fight was against Imovov. He was looking pretty good until he wasn't and got rocked and rocked bad. Some say he said it was a little early stoppage, but who knows? He is not going to have time to wait, though, because Kyle was going to be on him you guys know fight nerds you know the history you know the team they just been pumping out the w's and <clears throat> they're all getting ready for fights pretty soon except for a couple of them but man this is gonna be a great great matchup so stay tuned to see that one all right another good matchup you guys remember we talked about magomed ankalaya saying he got a fight well he's taking on number five alexander ratchich and magomed is pissed that the UFC overlooked him because he thinks he should be fighting for the belt. So check out what he had to say on, on a pod or something. I don't know. Now everybody knows I'm not fighting for the title and we'll fight Rakic in Abu Dhabi. Whoever Mick Maynard gives me, I will smash their face so that they can no longer deny, deny me. If I do my job impressively, I feel sorry for whoever is going to fight me from now going forward, bro. You already know you're fighting Rakic. You said it at the beginning, why you keep, did you forget CTE, y'all? Careful. Now, I don't see Uncle Live easily smashing Rakic. He could, but hey, you never know, man. Rakic was looking pretty good in his last fight against Yuri until he got caught or ga gassed out. But remember, Rakic had been out for quite a while before that fight. So maybe he, he's tuned up now. Maybe he's going to have his rhythm back. Who knows? <clears throat> Speaking of getting back, our boy... Mikey Chandler looking to come back to the octagon, finally coming back down to reality. Check this out. Never mind, guys. I think it's time. I finally admit the fight is off. He's still in stage two of the seven of grief pertaining to his career being over. Figured he'd be closer to five by now. Godspeed at the Notorious. So apparently Michael Chandler says he's not going to be looking to fight Connor anymore. And he could be looking for other fights. I know he mentioned Max. I know Conor mentioned Max. Uh, but lately, he's been going back and forth with Armando Sadukian, who is in the same weight class. And he does not have a dance partner because Islam, remember, hurt his ligament, hurt his hand, got some ligament damage. So he's going to be out on the shelf for the remainder of 2024. Hey, Armand's going to be doing that bull anti-bullying PSA he's gonna be back in the UFC he could get in a fight at by the end of the year why not set them up that would be a great fight to watch I know it would be fun Armand would probably whoop on Mikey Chandler but hey it would be a nice little payday and it would welcome Chandler back into the into the cage um I don't know what do you guys think out there Armand Saruki and Michael Chandler December all right Speaking of trying to get them in the cage, Johnny Bones posted this on his Insta or IG or I'm see on, on IG or X, whatever. But he posted a phone number and he's like, hey, if you want me to fight Tom Aspen, I'll call this number. 
And I don't know whose number it was. Some people were saying it was Ariel Hawani, but yeah, right, bro. Quit running, Johnny. Quit running. All right. Check this out. This is Marab Davishvili on the pod talking about Umar's last win. Yeah, so Umar, yeah, let's see. He has a big test now. I and saying that the UFC is favoring Umar because he's Khabib's cousin or he has the last, same last name, which I probably would have agreed with Marab. But when you do what Umar did to Corey Sanhagen, who is one of the baddest MFers at 135, bro. You get to the front of the line. It doesn't matter who you fought. When you can hang with the cream of the crop like that and make them look silly, bro, you're next, bro. I was with Marab up until this. Uh, and to, to defend Marab, I will say that this interview did take place before the fight. So, hey, check out the judges' scorecards. 50-45, 49-46, 49-46. Five rounds, guys. Yeah. He is that dude. He's freaking ready, man. He is ready. All right. Speaking of ready, we're finally going to get our boy Francis Ngannou in the PFL Smart Cage taking on Henan Pereira October 19th. It's scheduled for five rounds. They might not e even need five seconds. But uh, if you don't know who Henan Pereira is, he is the dude that beat the snot out of uh, Ryan Bader, check this out. It didn't take him very long. I just, I just don't know which way it's going to go. Is Bader going to level change onto a shin bone or a knee, or is he going to be able to ground for Hader? Oh, oh, to ground for Hader, oh, shin bone oh, level God. change onto a shin bone or a knee, or is he going to ah. be able to ground for Hader? Oh, Know which way it's really? going to go. Is Bader going to level change onto a shin Chris bone or Gary. a knee? Or is he going to be able to ground for Hader? Oh! Again, Bader it was a whole lot smaller than this dude. That dude is six freaking eight. It's going to, but it's going to be one of the first times that Francis has been in the cage with someone who's the same size. So I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, it is going to be a five round main event. So Let's see what happens, man. Let's see what happens. So last night we had UFC fight night main event. Marcin Taibura taking on Sergey Spivak. This was the finish of the night for me. Old school jujiteros. If you're out there watching, you're going to love this. Check this out. This is early around one, about a minute and a half into it. Uh, Marcin Tybura gets the takedown and ends up in Spivak's guard. Not too often that we. Spivak has the guard closed and he's trying to stretch Tybura out. And right as he's about to do this, I'm like, bro, who do you think you are? Antonio Nogueira? Yeah, bro. Check out this beautiful Hodger Gracie like arm part. I'm kidding. It's not that good, but it is good. You never see these in the UFC anymore. Look at this. This is old school at its finest. Close the guard, break the posture, pull on the arm. Look at this. It's got him down. He's starting to adjust. He opens up. He's climbing up. Pulls on the head. Done. Collect my submission. I'm out of here. So it looks like they're going to be trading places. Marcin Tybura was ranked number nine or number eight. Sergey was ranked number nine. They'll probably be trading places now. All right. Here is what I really wanted to get into, man. Next weekend, UFC 305. Main event, DDP taking on Israel Adesanya. Let's go over the bangers. And I have the most up-to-date odds from uh, my bookie. So let's, let's talk about it. Let's get into this. Early prelims, our boy Jesus Aguilar Ensenada's own taking on Australia's own Stuart Nickel. Stuart Nickel is going to be the favorite. He is the hometown favorite. This is going to be his first fight in the UFC. This is going to be Jesus's third fight in the UFC. So I believe he is two and one going into this. So he's is going to Jesus is going to have his hands full, but he's been here before. This is going to be his fourth fight in the UFC now. Let's see how Stewart handles the pressure and being the home crowd favorite. Uh, Jesus is a plus 172 underdog. So anytime you can get plus money, 
you know, and it can go down, man. I'm telling you, but this is probably going to be a three round war. Prelim fight that I'm going to be really looking forward to, man. This is going to be a banger. Josh Koulibau, Australia, Australia zone. Josh Koulibau taking on Ricardo Ramos. And Ricardo is a little slight favorite or underdog, I'm sorry, at plus 135. And Josh coming in at a minus 174 favorite. So stay tuned to those prelims. Again, early prelims and prelims. So get yourselves a UFC fight pass. Let's get into the main event, y'all. Main event. Check this out. The main card is going to open up with Lee Changlang taking on Carlos Pritz. Carlos Pritz is an MMA Fight Nerds team member, and he's also a minus 270 favorite. So Vegas knows something about this, man. Lee Changlang is a UFC veteran. He's been around the block. He, let me look at that head, man. He's got a Chinese Frankenstein head. So dude can take some damage. And dish it out at the same time. He is definitely going to have his hands full with the young Carlos Prates. But Carlos Prates and that team, MMA Fight Nerds, is on a tear. So watch out on that. Uh, tied to Ivasa Yarzino Rosenstrike. Bro, I don't know what the over-under is on this, but bet on the under. Tied to Ivasa, a plus 157 underdog. Bro, he could totally knock Yarzino's block off. And Yarzino is a minus... Two or four favorite. Man, I might get in on that one, bros. I might get in on that early one. All right. Moving closer to the main card. These two fights here are going to be awesome. Awesome. Do not get up to get a beverage. Do not get up to go to the bathroom. If you are going to go to the bathroom or get a drink, make sure it's in between the fights and not in between the rounds because don't blink either, man. Get little, like, toothpicks. Put them underneath your eyes so that your eyes don't close because you do not want to miss these matchups here. Number five, Matthias Gamera taking on number 11, Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker, the Kiwis, probably going probably gonna to be the hometown favorite. But uh, check out what Vegas says. Vegas says Gamera minus 285 favorite. That means they think they're gonna, he's going to steam. I bet you they think he's going to steamroll Dan Hooker and just wet blanket him, which is probably what he's going to do, man. And uh, he does have a blockhead too. So Dan Hooker is going to have to throw the entire kitchen sink at Matthias if he thinks he's going to get out with the W. If you're asking me, it's going to be a wrestle fest. Uh, Matthias, by whatever he wants, takedowns over and over and over, smashing, passing, beating the shit out of Dan Hooker. That's what Dan Hooker is good for, getting the shit beat out of him. Uh, KKF and Dan Ersig. Now, Dan Ersig might be he arriving to where he's at a little bit early or right on time, depending on who you're talking to. If you're talking to him, he's where he's supposed to be at. None of us who watch fights ever thought that this guy would even be able to last five rounds with Alexander Pantoja, the champ of the flyweight division, but he proved us all wrong. Some people even say he won the fight. But, hey, that's neither here nor there, like Fonzo likes to say. He's now taking on number four, KKF, and he's looking to leapfrog a handful of people to get into the top five. Uh, Vegas has KKF as a plus 185 underdog and Steve Ursig a minus 244 favor. I got to agree with Vegas on this one, man. I'm taking Ursig. Uh, I would imagine this is probably going to look a lot like when Brandon Moreno fought KKF that second time around and finished him by TKO. So this is only going to be a three-round fight. So look for Ursic to step on the gas and try to prove something. Oh, shit. That's co-main event. Co-main event. My bad. Uh, so main event, DDP putting the strap on the line, defending it for the second time. Actually, the first time, right? Defending it for the first time against... His arch rival, Israel Adesanya, to prove who is the most app. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not even going to touch that one, bro. What I'm not even going to mess with that one. But this is going to be a hell of a fight. And check out what Vegas is saying. Vegas has Izzy as a minus 140 favorite at the moment. DDP, the champ, at a plus 110. The level of disrespect is there on the line. Holy smokes man hey before i forget i want to remind you all or actually let you guys know if you're looking to follow someone who is on fire with their ufc picks 
Go look and up and follow AJ underscore MMA underscore. Dude is on absolute fire. I want to say he's only lost like one fight in the last four to five UFC main cards. So he's he always picks all the fights on the main cards. He's either five and zero. Oh, or four and one, and the four and one has only happened to him once on the last four to five cards. So again, give him a follow at AJ underscore MMA underscore on Insta. All right, y'all, that is a wrap, man. I cannot wait for next week. You know, I'm gonna have all the putasos and chingasos wrap up to talk about CJI results, ADCC results, UFC 305, and everything that happens between now and then. Until next week, y'all, please follow us on all the socials at Chingasos Crew. Until next week, have a kick-ass week. Chingasos Crew out. Peace. Now we should have